Good morning. It is good to be here with you this morning. What a beautiful day we have been given by God. The sun is shining. It's a wonderful temperature out that we can all sleep in, but we can also enjoy the sunshine. So it's good to be here with you today in the warmth of God's love and in the grace and forgiveness that is ours through Christ. As we get started today, we want to um, thank all of you that are here with us in in the sanctuary in worship, and those of you that are watching at home, um, we appreciate your attendance as well, and we hope that God comes to you in this time of worship and praise. As we get started this morning, I invite you to stand and participate as we ask for God's forgiveness and grace and hear those words of, of absolution that are ours as we confess our sins. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we often go astray. We look upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression and hope for peace. We exploit creation with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sins, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. In your name, amen. By the gift of grace, God in Christ Jesus is ours and makes us righteous. Receive the gift of forgiveness from God and walk in love. Amen. Let's join together and singing either in our hearts or in our homes with our opening hymn today. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit 
and in all that we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Snuggle up at home in your comfiest chair or couch and hear the word for today in our lessons. Good morning. This is a reading from James. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the ninth chapter. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. Whoever's not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It's better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Dear friends, grace and peace to you this day in fullest measure through Christ our Lord. As we continue to progress through the Gospel of Mark, we hear lessons that Jesus teaches on the way, on the way to Jerusalem. And here in our lessons today, we hear Jesus teaching about service and sacrifice and what it will take. We have examples of that in our own congregation. And today I'd like to call on Pete Marinelli to tell us about the sacrifice and service that people have made in your name this summer with the adult mission trip. Pete. Thanks, Pastor Sue, for giving me a chance to talk about what we did on our summer vacation this year. Now the disclaimers. First of all, 
Um, I apologize, you have to stare at my face this morning instead of my wife who usually does this. It would be much better, maybe I should put my mask back on. <laughs> Second, I'm not used to reading prepared words. I'm used to speaking off the cuff, but I've been traveling a lot lately, so somebody may have written most of the words I'm about to tell you. If you like them, give her the credit. If you're like, eh, blame the, de de the delivery. So, let's get started. Hope. It's a little word, but a powerful one. It was the theme for our week working in Kings Lake, Nebraska. While our group was smaller than normal, our hope was great. Our hope to make an impact and help as many as we were able to regain the lives they lost when the river flooded their homes to give them hope again. On a sunny Sunday morning, our group of four from Living Lord, Debbie Hall, Antonia Carubia, Lynn and I, set out not knowing what we were going to encounter in Kings Lake. What we did know was that we were meeting five dear friends from Peace Lutheran and that we were all excited to renew the friendship and get to work. Our host for the week was Presbyterian Church of the Cross in Omaha. At our first meal, we were able to meet some of the members and ask questions about the Kings Lake area. What we quickly realized was that the area we were heading to was largely forgotten and one of the people questioned if they should even be allowed to rebuild. The next morning, we met with our coordinator of the, the King's Garden. We learned a little history about the community. At one time, it was a, where the wealthy of Omaha built their summer homes. Later, they abandoned the area, and it became a community of folks regarded not from the other side of the tracks, but beyond the other side of the tracks. The goal of the kids who lived and grew up there was to grow up, get out, and never come back. And our organizer, Cindy, was one of those kids. But after living in Omaha for years, she felt God calling her back home to help the kids. The seed was planted and continued to grow in her heart and mind, despite her trying to resist, until she returned to the area, built a home kitty corner from her mom's, and got to work with the kids. The organization was established to give the kids of Kings Lake a place to come and know God and evolved into a tutoring area and providing ways to help local families. Then came March 2019 and the flooding of the nearby Elkhorn River. Ice dams and a quick warm up along with flooding rain sent two and a half feet of water into most of the homes which still have placards on the windows condemning the sites. Homes have slowly be been getting repaired, but funding is constantly a challenge. While we were there, their ability to spend funds was frozen, so donations and homeowner contributions were the only ways to fund projects. This small group is constantly searching for ways to fund their projects and is never sure how long the funding will be coming from the government. They work long hours showing God's love to their neighbors. One of our projects was working on the Gabino home, Mr. Gabino is a truck driver, so he's away from his home for long periods of time. When he returns and sees the work that has been done, he tears up with gratitude. Our crew painted and installed trim for windows, doors, and floors. We installed closets, doors, and door hardware. We left Mr. Gabino's home ready for kitchen cabinets and flooring, one step closer to being a home. At Jim and Pauline's home, we heard the story of the flooding and how they lived in a garage and later a mobile home until water and electric service was returned to their home and they could clean it out. Now, Jim's a collector, which is evident by the large number of antique tractors in his yard, and his garage is his office. He was anxiously awaiting a group that would come finish the office because he has a heart condition and can't do the work himself. Well, we did. A crew painted it and later installed cabinets. Jim was overjoyed to be back in his office, and Pauline, his wife, was ecstatic to have Jim out of the house. Another project was helping Miss Ellen get her yard back to a place of enjoyment for her. The home was flooded, her basement was flooded, and two walls collapsed. The home was raised, the walls rebuilt, and then the foundation was raised by adding another row of concrete blocks. We needed to pile dirt around the foundation and grade it. And by we, I mean the ladies in our group. They, got, they thought they were gonna be working in a garden and this was not really a garden. 
Thankfully, there was a bobcat available to move the dirt because the ground was hard as concrete. Um, we, were, we added mulch to the area, creating flower beds and giving her back her yard again. In the back of her yard was the Kings Lake Community Garden. Debbie and Antonia pruned and cleaned up the vines so that neighbors could come in and take whatever produce they wanted. Helping others is the goal of the King's Garden. Some of the neighbors don't really trust others, but by working with the kids and meeting some of their basic needs, they're reaching out to the not so trusting in the community. One way they were doing this is by hosting a community fish fry. Having a place for families to gather was clearly a high priority. This fish fry was coming up the week after we left, and they needed a place for people to sit. They had planned to rent tables and chairs, but we came up with a different plan. A nearby church was getting rid of several 12-foot-long picnic tables that were ready for the garbage. The King's Garden Group is great at reusing materials, so a group of our ladies drove over to the church, used a cirque saw to cut, them, cut the tables apart, hefted them onto a trailer, strapped them down, and brought them over to a gathering place in King's Lake to bring those tables back to life. We found a pile of two by tens in their reclaimed lumber area, went, picked through them and cut the planks for the tabletops and benches. Uh, one, of, one of our favorite memories is of Antonia standing on top of the boards of the table, holding them in place while we drilled pilot holes. And I've got to set this one up a little bit. So I won't say that we're old, but I'll say it's much easier for us to not bend over all the way to the ground to do these things. So we were building the picnic tables on top of another picnic table. So Antonia climbed up on top of this picnic table and we may or may not have video of her table dancing on top of the <laughs> table. Maybe, I'm not gonna say for sure. So then Debbie and Antonia used cordless drills and impact drivers to attach new hardware to the legs. Lynn went around cutting and sanding the corners off the tables and seats, making them much safer. It, I had a hard time using my own power tools. I couldn't wrestle them out of the ladies' hands, but that's what happens every year. When we finished, the King's Garden had seven new picnic tables to add to the six they currently had. They now have seating for over 100 people when they gather. A week after, they le after we left, they sent us pictures of the community gathered for the fish fry, and every picnic table was filled. Hope is what we wanted to give the community. The filled picnic table showed us that hope is alive and well in Kings Lake. Our team cannot thank you enough for supporting our mission efforts. You gave the people of Kings Lake hope. And I want to finish by saying what we always say every year is that everyone is welcome on these trips. And uh, Lynn and I were, were pretty reluctant to go on the first one, but we can't get to the next trip quickly enough. We, we enjoy it that much. There's so much joy and so much giving, and we welcome anyone who wants to participate. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. And thank you to the whole mission team that went. It's an example of exactly what we were talking about. What's the correct way to be church? Everybody has their own ways. Everybody has their own ideas. And as the disciples walked with Jesus, they told him there were some that just weren't doing it the right way. Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons. We tried to stop them. They weren't following us. They weren't doing it how we thought they were supposed to do it. And Jesus rebuked them. What's the right way to be church? Is it dancing on top of a picnic table while others are building them? Yeah, it is. Oh, but that's not the correct way to be church. I'm sure that Jesus was there saying, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Is it stealing someone else's power tools and using them because you want to get the job done? 
okay, we're not going to call it stealing. It's borrowing. It's using them to their best advantage. Is it taking time off in the summer from a job and going to instill hope in a community that others didn't even think should have the dignity of having workers come there? Yeah, it was. There are so many ways to be church in the world today. And we're called to do that. To look at others before we look at ourselves. Throughout this pandemic time that we have been in, we have been physically insulated and become more insular. We look at ourselves first. That's probably the greatest, greatest tragedy. That we have not looked at others. Hope is what the group set out to do. But hope is what we do all the time. And we do it by reaching out. Jesus taught his disciples about sacrifice and service giving of ourselves. And so that is what we talk about today, too. The sacrifice and service of the mission teams that go out, the sacrifice and service every single day and week that takes place here. It's hard to get back into the swing of being church when we've been church alone at home. But it's time. It's time to come back out to serve others. So listen to the stories. Ask the people that were in Omaha this summer. What was the best thing probably about their trip? That they were together. That they were working together. Church is about community, not just individuality. And although many of us have a personal relationship with God, there is a communal relationship that reaches across to others. It's both and, not either or. So we pray and we serve, and we love, and we forgive, and we rely on that faith, and we trust in God to be the church in the world today. Amen. I invite you now to sing within your hearts, or if you're at home, to sing out loud and strong for the hymn of the day, or across the crowded ways of life.
I invite you to join your hearts in prayer as we pray for those that we know and those that are known to God. We pray for the church and its ministries. Bless those who are baptized and encourage them in their journey of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ with lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen them in a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those who are underserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who struggle with cancer, dementia, or other diseases. Provide them with peace and resilience for the days ahead. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who lead this congregation, musicians, readers, counters, tech staff, ushers, office staff. Bless us through their ministry and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for all your saints, those we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts that are known only to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please safely extend a sign of peace with your neighbor. You may be seated. We give thanks today for you and for the offerings that you bring, whether they are um, directed here in the baskets that are here with us at worship, whether you drop off offerings in the drop box, whether you ha do them through your bank's bill paying system or have them sent in by the mail, we give thanks to you for your offerings continue to spread the good news of Christ in this community and beyond. And we thank you for those things which continue to spread the word of Christ throughout the world. Let us pray. God of abundance, you cause streams to break forth in the desert, manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts that you have first given us, and unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the word you love so, world you love so dearly. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we continue with the liturgy of the table. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food, you created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life. You fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it for all to eat, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Remembering his life given for us, his rising from the grave, his body given up, 
we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. For through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty God with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Just a reminder that communion uh, distribution will be as you exit. The ushers will usher you out by rows. And remember that this is the body and blood of Christ that is given and shed for you. Our word of the day today for our confirmation students is service. So in case your confirmation students are here or at home that are listening for the word of the day, it's service today. We want to thank you for being here today, and especially we thank those who were on the adult mission trip this year. They were small in number, but they were mighty. And they invite you to join them, especially next summer as they plan for the next mission trip. I hear that there's um, a possibility of going back to Omaha, perhaps. Um, and there are other things, too, that are um, you know, coming up on the radar. We are constantly presented throughout the nation with things that happen where neighbors and friends just can't handle it alone. And that's when other disaster relief agencies come in and they will make those opportunities available so that people can come and participate and help a neighbor that possibly they will never see again. But we are all part of the body of Christ. So please consider doing that. Be in touch, especially with the Marinelli's, because they've been heading that up here, and they will have dates um, for next year as soon as those are available. Pardon? June. June. <laughs> so continue to, to um, keep that mark that on your calendar when the dates are finally set, and sometime in June, um, please note that and take advantage of it. As always, any time that we reach out in service, the miracle of ministry is the fact that we always gain more than we ever think we give. So there are benefits to coming and doing that. Also, please notice that Bible studies are continuing now. Um, there's a Thursday morning Bible study. There's a Sunday morning Bible study that are um, back in place for this fall season. Please um, take note of those. And the other announcements that are in your Living News um, e-update that comes to you each week, usually on Wednesday. If you're not getting the e-updates, please let us know. Um, it could be that your email address is not correct on our end, or it could be that you don't have us as a, uh, we're going into your spam folder or something like that. So please contact us if you are not getting the e-updates each week. Now, as you reach out in service in God's name, please continue in God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let's join in our hearts in song or if you're at home singing out loud as we exit this time of worship.
peace and love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.